Liverpool is set to sign Dominic Soboslai from RB Leipzig. The transfer fee is estimated to be around 60 to 70 million and the release clause will be triggered. It was set to expire at the end of today, but Liverpool are acting different right now. This isn't the FSG and Liverpool I was expecting. I had a whole separate video that I filmed last night covering all the transfer news in the market, along with all the Liverpool transfer news, but a lot of it's outdated right now. So I have to redo the video and get it up for you guys. So I'm gonna to try to do in one take and just go through it. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more footy transfer news, more footy updates in general, just more content coming down the line. A lot of surprises in store, so stay tuned for that. And comment below what kind of content do you wanna see for the rest of the transfer window and beyond. Open to suggestions and wanna put out some really good stuff, so stay tuned for that. But Dominic Sabaslai, what do you need to know? Here's everything that is going on with him. He is signing to Liverpool. The deal is expected to get done. Major outlets are reporting it. We got confirmation from Joyce early this morning, and then we saw Ornstein report it with The Athletic, and now it's taking on the shape of the feeling of how it felt like when McAllister signed. Basically, Liverpool's at a point where they could sign a player who could reinvent their midfield, provide really good reinforcement, get goals and assists and contributions from the center of the park, and is apparently a really good presser and is gonna add some legs to the midfield. I mean, listen, if we could end the season, or the transfer window at least, with a midfield three of McAllister, Turam, and Sabaslai, that's pretty great. I can't really, I can't deny that. That's an amazing, amazing midfield three. It's fairly raw, but we have the experience in Thiago, Fabinho, Henderson, and then we also have Bajcetic, Curtis Jones, Elliot there. It honestly takes shape fairly nicely. That's nine midfield players for three positions. That's about the bare minimum I'd say you'd want when you're competing in Europe and you have domestic cup competitions in England. The center of the park is the most versatile position you could play because you could play a multitude of positions and be all across the park. Regardless, what number do I think he's gonna wear? I could see him wearing 23. I'm pretty sure he wears 23 for Leipzig. So that would be very fitting. The eight is also available. How do I feel about that? I mean, I'm pretty sure he does like Stevie G if I'm not mistaken from what I've been reading. Will he take the eight? Remains to be seen. I don't know who I want to have the eight, but whoever comes and takes the eight next, I just want them to have the confidence to take the eight and make it their own. Obviously it'll always be Stevie's number, but you know, usher in a new era of a Liverpool number eight. But there is a major twist and don't, Quote me on this, take it with a grain of salt, because I saw a report from a fairly big Liverpool Twitter fan account that said late last night, basically Dominic Sabosai is in a position where he is set to sign for the club, but the reason why it's taking a while is because Liverpool is trying to test the waters for a major Leipzig duo swoop for both Sabosai and Guardiola and that the total package for the two of them would be around 150 mil. And that was kind of the explanation as to why Liverpool's transfer movement hasn't been necessarily the most, you know, rapid. It's been kind of taking a while to develop, but the validity of that, I don't know. Anfield Agenda, a very big Liverpool fan account, who I assume you guys know and probably watch, to be quite honest with you, uh, he follows them and there's also a number of other Liverpool fans that I follow on Twitter who follow this account so they basically also said take it with a grain of salt but that's apparently why Schmatka is in Germany and that's why it's taking a while if we were to get Joschko Guardiola wow I mean I think it's like a 15% chance of happening at highest to get the both of them but a man could dream the only issue is I think that Joshua Guardiola, if he comes in, is going to mean that Kefren Turam isn't going to join the club more than likely. And that's maybe why Romeo Lavia is being also talked about as a potential transfer target for Liverpool. Um, to finish off with the Liverpool transfer news, because I'm expecting this deal to be done and I'm probably going to have another video out when it's officially confirmed, 
going through his squad number and how he fits into the midfield, officially confirmed, going through his squad number and how he fits into the midfield. To wrap up the video, I'm going to talk about other rumors and confirmed moves that have happened in the last couple of days because I haven't had an update out in a while. Basically, Roberto Firmino has joined Al Ahli. He is getting a big financial package. And honestly, I was expecting Firmino to stay in Europe. Um, I thought he would go to Madrid. I thought that was almost surely nailed on. I don't know what Madrid is pursuing. Um, are they going for Mbappe? Are they going for Kane? I think it's a bit of a waiting game between both of those names right now. And while I think Firmino would have been an amazing addition to most Champions League clubs, I mean, he he earned a lot of money at Liverpool relative to the average viewer of this channel and average fan of the sport. But he didn't earn a lot compared to the amount of contribution he had to the club. He earned significantly less than what he made the club in the sense that he's won us so many tournaments. He won the club World Cup by himself, basically. His goal won it. Um, he scored important goals. So I can't be too mad at Bobby Firmino for getting his bag. I know some people are criticizing it, but at the end of the day, I think it's a wonderful move for him in the sense that he's getting all the financial wealth that he could ever have dreamed of. I hope he wins the golden boot. I hope he wins the league. He's going to be playing with Mendy, so that's going to be weird because, you know, Chelsea and Liverpool, but good luck to Bobby. Also, Reese Williams has gone out on loan to Aberdeen for the season. There's no option or obligation to buy Reese Williams. Klopp and the Cubs probably moved on from him and are looking for a better player to come in and have a higher ceiling at that position and to be more ready-made to plug in and play. Fabio Carvalho has also completed his medical and is now at RB Leipzig. It should be noted that Carvalho's loan could have been potentially used to sweeten the deal. Chris Rinkuku leaving and Sabasai leaving means that their two best offensive players are gone and now Fabio Carvalho has a real good run-in to get a lot of playing time at RB Leipzig. Regardless, the deal is not permanent in the sense that there's no specific obligation or option to buy Fabio either. So either way, even if he does choose to leave the club, if he plays really well, we could see him amass a transfer fee that is much more than what we ever anticipated. So that is really enticing to see. I've talked about Turam, I've talked about Lavia, I've talked about Sabaslai. I've talked about Guardiola even, but the final player I'd like to talk about, or the final two I should say, Goncalo Ignacio, who has had more links in recent days, somebody who I don't think is going to join the club, Manu Kone. Kone went off during an under-21 Euros game with crutches, so that kind of sucks, but it kind of reinforces the reasoning behind Liverpool not pursuing a deal for Kone and Turam. Basically, they could have gotten injured, and one of them did, so... There's that. But Gonçalo Ignacio, there's a chance that he could potentially come to the club. I also don't see that as being likely. Um, if we do get a center back, I think it's either going to be Guardiola or somebody who's relatively young English could fit into our quota really well and is a cheaper kind of for the future buy, which also sucks. So thank you so much for watching. That's all the Liverpool transfer news I have for you today. I have another video coming out within the next 12 hours or so. Basically going to cover all the big deals that have happened besides Liverpool. I was going to do a joined video for it, but basically too much content and I'd be here for like half an hour and people more, more than likely don't want to have to listen through all of that. So thank you again for watching. Subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and comment below what type of content do you want to see on this channel? What do you think of Dominic Sabasly signing for Liverpool? And what do you think of Liverpool's transfer window so far? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sideline Sato. Peace.